Hello there everybody, this is of course Nick back on the Get Me Off Grid video blog. What I'm going to do for you today is just to explain in cash terms with the viability or not, as the case may be, of making your own ethanol by comparison with buying bioethanol that you would normally burn in a bioethanol fireplace um, at home. Now do bear in mind that if you're buying small quantities the cost is excessive. For my very first trial burns with bioethanol gel, I only bought one liter. And that was at a cost of five pound sterling plus another five pound for postage and packing. So that one liter cost me ten pounds. Obviously, in small quantities, it's not viable whatsoever. Okay? But you do get a cash flow benefit if you are making your ethanol yourself. Um, but let me just explain what I've done. I went shopping as well as my food shopping. I also bought myself a siphon pack. Now the siphon pack basically it's it's something I'm going to carry on reusing so I'm not going to include that in the cost of making this particular batch of bioethanol which I'm currently fermenting right now. I also bought some wine finings which would basically be serving the same kind of function as turbo clear. Um, but so I'm not going to include that in the cost because essentially if I'm going to be using something like a bread yeast that will be able to separate out unlike a turbo yeast which will probably stay in uh, suspension. So let's let's ignore that okay. Let's think about just the cost of the sterilizer plus the wine yeast plus the sugar. Now I've spent a total of £9.29. The sterilizer was £1.90 which as it turns out is enough for either two or three sterilizations of, of the equipment prior to setting yourself going uh, and if you use it more economically making up less sterilizer and make sure you swool it around you know swish it around all the equipment I've just created a new word swool there you go if you swool it or swish it around all the equipment you can probably get away with using your sterilizer on four separate occasions the quantity of yeast was probably enough for at least two fermentations that I bought so the sterilizer cost £1.90, the yeast cost £2.05. Okay. Let's say, for argument's sake, and let's give a pessimistic figure of £9.29, including the £5.34 I spent on 6 kilograms of sugar. Now, the sugar I got for 89 pence per kilogram. If I was to get it from the, lo the local supermarket in 5 kilogram bags, the quantity of cost per kilogram would go down to seven, 79 pence. Okay, but I haven't done that today. I was just physically carrying the sugar back. I wasn't driving back home with, with all my shopping. So I just bought the, you know, straightforward six one kilogram bags. So that was 89 pence each. My point here is the cost of the sterilizer per fermentation would be less. The cost of the yeast per fermentation would be less and the cost of the sugar could also be less. Probably knocking one, two, three pound off the total cost. So the pessimistic value is nine pound twenty nine. The more optimistic value is closer to six or seven pounds. Okay? But let's stick with that figure of nine pound twenty nine for the moment. A pessimistic figure. Now on the basis that you can create from this four liters of yield so that would be let's say 87 89 percent alcohol by volume still very very combustible okay because anything over 50 percent will burn all right just obviously the higher percentage the better burning you get obviously the best quantity is of course like your 94 95 or as close to 100 as you can get but let's say you get four liters which you should be able to do if your wash makes 14 percent alcohol by volume for a 25 liter wash, namely five gallon wash. That will be two pound thirty three per liter, plus of course the power of boiling the water initially and running of the distiller itself. So that would be roughly the same cost that you'll be spending if you were buying it straight off the shelf. Obviously this is a very pessimistic value. Okay? If you are I mean let's try and work this out. If if the total cost was seven pound per fermentation. Okay? get into the calculator seven pound and then we'll divide that by four liters 
£1.75 per litre. When you're buying commercially available bioethanol in bulk, the lowest price I've seen quoted out of all the providers out there is £1.95 per litre. £1.75 is obviously a little less. £2.33, that would be the quantity you'd be paying for small-ish quantities. But remember the figure I saw of £1.95, that was if you're buying quantities of 200 litres at a time. Now, what average person who's living in a flat can actually store 200 litres of bioethanol around the place? It's actually more convenient for you to get lots of small quantities than it is for you to get one large quantity, unless of course you're, uh, you know, you, you've got a massive quantity of land, you've got yourself outbuildings and places where you can store a highly flammable liquid very affordably or easily. So the cost can be lower than buying regular bioethanol from a from a other provider, but also if you're making small quantities for you to use yourself at home, you get a cash flow benefit of doing home distillation. Okay, So it can be more beneficial. It depends upon how you're using your ethanol and what you're using it for. Uh, if you're thinking about cooking, it is actually quite cost effective to do cooking with the bioethanol. It's, it, it's not too bad at all. You know, half a liter can do a couple of days worth of cooking for a single person. You know, it's, it's not serious expenditure. But it's a damn sight cheaper than buying, let's say, methylated spirits off the shelf. So what I've done now is I've set out um, a blog asking other people who maybe use other forms of off-grid technologies, such as wood fuel or LPG gas, or maybe, uh, you know, fuel oil, what their cost-benefit analysis would be. And then I'm going to try and provide some figures at some point. It's the cost-benefit analysis of homemade bioethanol. Obviously, your own land restrictions will affect and will be a deciding factor as to what you personally would use for your own form of environmental fuel. For myself, bioethanol is the best choice because I can't get a chimney fitted here. I can't get a, f a flue fitted in this one particular property. So anything that's going to produce carbon monoxide is a no-no. Uh, so ethanol is still pretty cool.